Ladies and gentlemen on the Shrek Gaming Center.com video, we have possible news on the release date and specifications of the GTX 980. So, the GTX 980, huh? Well, yeah. Now, obviously, we know about the Titan X, and it's actually selling better than what NVIDIA anticipated. In fact, better than the original Titan. And there's been a couple of sources for that, but uh, compute, computerbase.de uh, reported that. And ever since, well, NVIDIA entered into the $1,000 uh, graphics card, people were really curious, you know, was it actually going to be something that was even financially viable? How many gamers are really going to cough up that amount of cash? Now, obviously, there were some benefits of the original Titan. Um, we all know what they were, primarily, you know, improved compute performance and so on and so on and so on. I won't, you know, reiterate too much, but... That's not the case. Um, the GTX 980 Ti is supposedly, at least according to Suicockers, and they've got some pretty good sources in the industry, not, the GTX 980 is probably going to arrive late summer or after summer. So let's say August, September time. Now obviously this is not confirmed by NVIDIA, but it's looking like that's probable at this point. Probable not guaranteed and it also marks the last single gpu from nvidia before pascal so what i mean of course by single gpu is you know none of these dual gpus on the same board type of things so this it's going to be this the gtx 980 ti and then we're going to switch over to pascal whatever that ends up being called so, what's going on with the specifications? What 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 we're going to be seeing? Is it going to be, you know, fewer shaders? The early rumours, as many of you might be aware, was that the Titan, the Titan X rather, has 3072 CUDA cores and it's got 192 TMUs, 96 ROPs, blah, blah, blah. So, what we have for the tie is exactly the same. The difference is twofold. One, the core clocks are supposedly going to be higher, around 10%. So, to give you an indication, uh, the core clock of... Uh, we're talking the base core here, we're not referring to the boost. The base clock of the Titan X is 1002 MHz, whereas um, the TIE is supposedly going to be 1100 MHz. Uh, the memory is supposedly going to be the same bandwidth, but... The difference, the primary difference, is going to be regarding the memory. So the memory is going to be sporting the same 384-bit interface, the same uh, clock speed, and you're still going to be getting 336 gigabytes per second, but the amount of it is going to be halved. So rather than seeing 12, you're going to be seeing 6. So what's the price going to be? Or any difference in compute performance or any of that jazz is not known. But it's looking like it's going to be a very high-end card still. It's, it's not going to be cheap. It's not going to be, you know, $500 most likely. It's going to be that GPU that's just a step below. Now, the MSRP from what people are saying is expected to be $599, uh, which is probable that that means that we're going to see a drop in price for the 980, the GTX 980. But once again, as we all know, this is not confirmed. Furthermore, as I'm sure that you're probably aware, Fiji is coming out on how well is it going to stack up with the Fiji GPU once again. Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, probably fairly well. And I base this on the assumption that... From what the leaks have been, and from what the rumours are, and from what we saw at um, GDC, the GPU was 60% faster than the 98 than the 290. But we don't know the state of the drivers at that point. We don't know how finished the silicon was, or even if that was the 390X. For all we know, that was the 380X, or it was the standard 390, or what have you. We just don't know. But let's take 60%. Um, that would still mean that the the nine, uh, sorry, the the three ninety X is probably a little faster than the Titan X, so we can naturally extend that that the two that the three ninety X is probably faster than the nine eighty Ti. 
Uh, I'm I'm not guaranteeing this. I'm not basing this on anything just by percentages and kind of making some educated guesses. We also have to bear in mind that uh, Fiji was released after Maxwell. It's basically AMD's answer to Ma uh, to Ma uh, to the Maxwell architecture, whereas obviously um, Pascal is going to be you know the next generation that AMD are going to release their graphics card and so on and so forth. So for the Pascal generation, AMD are going to have to release the the 400 range. So theoretically, once again, theoretically. It's should be a little slower than the than the uh, free nighters, but the only way we can actually guess this is by that sixty percent that we keep hearing about at GDC. So anyway, uh, a little bit off topic. People have been messaging me on some DirectX twelve stuff. Yes, I will be covering the analysis. I'm actually planning to do it this weekend. We have also recorded all the battlefield stuff, so hopefully the battlefield. Bits and bobs will be finished this weekend. Hopefully, over the next few days as well, um, I'm going to be getting up uh, a Bloodborne frame rate. Obviously, there's no graphics comparison because you can't, well, compare against nothing. But we will be at least doing a little bit of visual analysis and frame rate. From what I've seen and played, which is very little to be honest, Amata was the one that she was playing most of it. I wasn't actually even home um, or, or even in the same house. As basically she took the PS4 around hers. But I did pop around for a bit and I did try it. And it feels pretty cool um, from what my little um, brief play of about 15 minutes was. But I did notice some frame rate drops, some slight variances when I was playing combat. But that's eyeballing it. That's not me actually running any frame rate analysis on it. But we will be covering that. Uh, at the moment, I'm working pretty brutal hours, um, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, which really screws me up. Um, but I have a lot of cool stuff over this weekend planned, so we're going to be smashing that out. So just in case anyone's wondering, I have got your DX12 stuff, um, and I will be running analysis on it. Uh, what graphics cards and what GP um, what CPUs, a variety, um, probably... Uh, this is just me kind of throwing out a few examples, but the 290X, uh, a couple of NVIDIA cards, a couple of AMD cards, a couple of CPU variants as well, um, just to kind of give you guys some indications of what performance is. So, yeah, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that as well. But, with all of this said, I'm going to shoot off because I have lots of editing to do. Um, I've got a friend's laptop at the moment that I've rescued via a live boot CD because his install of Windows has failed, so quite literally that's quite next to me and I'm uh, watching over as it copies all of his crap over to his USB hard drive. By the way, if you're ever curious about um, trying to rescue a laptop or you know a system if you've got problems with, let's say, you know, a corrupt Windows install or something like that, you should check something out like Hiren's Boot CD. I'm not advertising it, it's completely free. Uh, you can get it from like SourceForge and other different websites. But it's um, H-I-R-E-N-S and then Boot CD. It's pretty cool. It allows you to even run into like a mini XP environment, which pretty much gives you drag and drop capabilities. So if you don't even, if you're giving technical support to someone over the phone, on a device and they don't want to be dealing with Linux command prompts or they don't even want to be dealing with like MS-DOS command prompts which are just particularly difficult to run like xcopy or what have you but it's still a pain in the butt particularly if you're dealing like multiple directories you could just tell them to download Hiren it's not like it's a secret thing that I found out or anything but I thought I'd tell you just in case you're not aware of it because it's just a free tip from me to you it's a really cool little uh, thing actually I last used a version several versions I go. Uh, I think this is like 15 or so. I can't actually remember that's from memory uh, from today. But I think I last used it in like version 9, so my version is really old. It's actually amazing and the, some of the additions they've got for this is pretty cool. Anyway, as I said, a uh, bit of a free tip for me to you. It's well worth having the inventory just kind of stored, even if you never ever use it. It's good to know that, hey, your hard drive fails, you can get everything back. Not that you shouldn't do backups periodically, but, you know, just in case you can't, or, you know, you, it's between backups, which can happen, especially 
if things are scheduled, then it's it's good just to be able to do. Or even if you want to be able to get in and just try and modify a system by um, a system file or what have you, just kind of uh, download something. It's quite nice. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.